So you want to know how to fix anterior pelvic tilt. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do in order to fix it. Now make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to teach you which muscles you need to stretch, which muscles you need to strengthen, and also the posture cues that you need in order to fix anterior pelvic tilt for good. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. So one of the first things to understand about anterior pelvic tilt are the causes of it. Now I'm somebody, I see a lot of people do videos on YouTube about anterior pelvic tilt that don't actually have it themselves. And the theory is really good. The theory is out there. It's quite easily to, easy to find the stuff that I'm going to share in this video. But it's one thing reading the theory. It's another thing putting it into application if you've suffered with this your whole life. Hi, in case we haven't met, my name is Rad Burmeister. I'm one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and co-creators of the UMS, where we turn driven people into superhumans. And the way we get such astonishing results with our members is that we've created a program that has a balance between strength and flexibility. If you want to know how we do that, grab one of the free blueprints. We've got the strength blueprint, the flexibility blueprint, and the nutrition blueprint. There's a link in the description of this video. And you should join our private Facebook group called the UMS Movement Mastermind, where we provide coaching and also go live daily for Q&As. There's a link in the description of this video as well. And if you have any questions about this topic, about the anterior pelvic tilt, please leave a comment here uh, and like it, of course, if you like the video. Now, if you look at this, if I completely relax, that's what my posture looks like. That's me being completely relaxed. So one of the first things that I'm gonna talk about is the postural cues you have to do. So watch what I, this is how I stand all the time. So see the difference there, okay? There's relaxed, and that's the way I stand. Now, the, the reason why I get such a bad anterior pelvic tilt is I've got something called spondylolisthesis. What that means is that for me, there's L4 and L5, these are the, the lowest vertebrae in the spine. All the vertebrae normally sit on top of each other like that. If this is my L5, this is my L4, then my L4 actually sits forward, okay, which creates a massive anterior pelvic tilt. So the first thing you want to think about is what postural cues do you do when you're standing up and when you're walking? Because it's like the exercises are good, but you ha and they're very important, but you have to also be thinking about the way that you stand. So the first thing that we're going to think of is if you stand with your feet shoulder width apart, we want to pull the heels together. Okay, so what I want to do, if you watch, so here I'm relaxed, and now watch what happens when I pull my heels together. Because by pulling my heels together, so if you have a look at my feet here, my feet are facing forward. Now when I pull my heels together, I'm not talking about actually driving my heels together like that. I'm talking about just pulling them together. And what that actually does is, is it activates my glutes. So my glutes are engaged now. And it even activates my abdominal muscles a little bit. And when the abdominal muscles are activated and the glutes are activated, it's going to pull my pelvis into a posterior pelvic tilt. The next thing that we want to, and that takes care of the pelvis, but when you've got an APT, it also ripples through the rest of your spine. So what we want to also do is just bring the chin back a little bit and just um, think of spreading the shoulders, bringing the shoulders out wider like that. I don't like the cue of pulling the shoulders back. That's a really bad cue because that's not a natural way to stand. But if you just think of standing tall, so pulling your chin back a little bit, drawing the heels together to engage the glutes and standing up straight. And you're going to do that all the time. So whenever you're standing, you're thinking of engaging the glutes by pulling the heels together. And I've been doing this for a few years now, so it started to become a little bit more natural for me. I still catch myself sometimes in these videos when I look at them, when I play back, I think, oh man, I'm being lazy there and I'm not standing properly. But that's the first thing that you need to understand is the um, postural cues. And you need to do that all the time because you're, if you've got an anterior pelvic tilt, then your body's going to want to go into that APT and we need to be working to correct it. Now we want to talk about which muscles are tight and which muscles are weak. So when you have an anterior pelvic tilt, if you see if you've got a spondylolisthesis like I do, um, from my knowledge and the research that I've done, there's not, um, I, I can't fix a spondylolisthesis, but I can work with the issues that it creates in order to have as much of a pain-free existence as I can and, and have a good quality life. Um, but if you don't have a spondylolisthesis and you still have an APT, then all of this stuff is going to be really relevant for you. So, the muscles that are tight are the hip flexors, 
and the lumbar extensors. So when the hip flexors are tight and the lumbar extensors are tight, it pulls the pelvis like that, okay? So, and then the muscles that are weak are the hamstrings, the glutes, and the abs. Because when the hamstrings are strong and the glutes are strong, they're gonna pull the top of the pelvis back into a posterior pelvic tilt. And when the abs are strong, they're gonna pull the front of the pelvis up and into a posterior pelvic tilt, okay? So the, what we're gonna go through now is a strategy on how you can overcome uh, those issues, the stretches that you can do and the strength training movements that you can do in order to fix your anterior pelvic tilt. So something to understand about anterior pelvic tilt is that sitting down makes it worse. And the main reason why sitting makes it worse is that it puts the hip flexors into a really shortened position. So the hip flexors become really tight. And then when you stand up, because the hip flexors are short, they try and stay in that shortened position, which pulls the pelvis forward like that. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but that's what happens. So one of the best things to understand is that the stretches that I'm about to show you, these are really good for or um, you, you want to do this throughout the day. You want to be offsetting the amount that you're sitting down at your desk with some stretching to stretch out the muscles that become tight. So the first one that we're going to do, we'll do one for the hip flexors. Now, um, I've just got a fit ball here because I'm going to show you a couple of different exercises uh, and one of them uses a fit ball, but the other ones, you can do it with a football or you could do it without a football, it's your call. And this first one is one that you don't need a football for. You can just put your foot on a chair, anything like that. And from here, we're gonna go into this long lunge position. And then what I'm gonna do from here, there's two ways to do this. So the further away that the knee is from the object, the easier it's going, going to be. So out here will be easier uh, for somebody that's less flexible. Back here will be much harder for somebody that's more flexible. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lean into the stretch like this, okay? So I'll just come back here. So I'm going to lean forward and just put my weight on that front leg and I'm feeling it down here, which is where I want. And then the second parts of the stretch, I'm going to come up, bring my leg back a bit. Now watch what I do with my pelvis. This is really important. I'm going to push into a posterior pelvic tilt by engaging my abs and my glutes. And then I'm going to push my bum back towards the ball like that. And now that really gets up into the hip flexors. And you can do each of these positions maybe 20 or 30 seconds and you could do it one, two, three, five times. You could stay going back and forth like this, you know, for up to five minutes if you wanted to. The, the more you do it, the better it's gonna be, okay? So that's how we stretch the hip flexors. To stretch the lumbar spine, I'm just gonna show you a really easy one that you can do that doesn't require any equipment. So if I bend my knees like this and then just round my back as much as I can, and then from here, I'm just gonna relax and just bounce very gently, okay? I'm intentionally not straightening my legs. I'm a relatively flexible person. If you look, I haven't done any kind of a warm up or anything, but I'm not trying to get a hamstring stretch. What I'm trying to do is to get in to my lumbar spine. And by doing this, this relieves the hamstrings by bending the knees and allows me to get into my back. And just bouncing like this, this is a really nice, you can even kind of rock side to side. This is a really nice, gentle um, lumbar spine stretch. And those are the two areas of your body that you want to stretch. Hip flexors, lumbar spine. Now we're going to go on to the strengthening exercises. So we want to strengthen the hamstrings, strengthen the glutes, and strengthen the abs. So to strengthen the glutes, we can do exercises like a, uh, a hip thrust. So from here, again, you can use a bench is the preferred way to do a hip thrust or a box. Um, but from here, if you put a weight like a barbell or a kettlebell or whatever you can uh, lift on here and push up. But the number one thing is that when you push up, you don't push like this. See, that's me pushing in an, a in an anterior pelvic tilt. What I want to do is when I get to the top, I want to push into a posterior pelvic tilt. I want to really drive through my glutes so that I'm using the muscles to pull me into the posterior pelvic tilt, okay? If you don't have any weights and you're doing this at home on the edge of your bed, you can make this a lot harder by doing it on a single leg. But in all honesty, 
It's much better to do it with two legs when you're stable and structured when you're talking about fixing an anterior pelvic tilt. And if you do need some weight, um, you can put a little bit of weight on your hips here. But bear in mind, we're not talking about doing any personal bests here. We're not talking about strength training where you're doing sets of five reps or anything like that. We want to do sets of uh, eight to 10 reps and we want to do them very, very good with perfect technique at probably only about 60% um, of your maximum uh, capacity. So um, maybe 40 to 50% of your one RM, uh, one repetition max. Because the idea is that you want to feel that you can fully lock out into a posterior pelvic tilt at the top of the movement. Now the next movement that we're going to do is uh, we want to strengthen the hamstrings and to strengthen the hamstrings we can do exercises like a football hamstring curl. So you push your hips up into the air, pull the legs in hard, back out slow and then down. And again, what I'm trying to do is avoid doing this with an anterior pelvic tilt. I'm trying to train my body to have a posterior pelvic tilt. So I want to push my hips forward, engage my glutes, engage my abs while I pull the legs in and then come out slowly. And then the last exercise that we can do as a, well, sorry, the last example of an exercise that you can do for um, strengthening a posterior pelvic tilt is an RKC plank. So if I go down on my uh, elbows and uh, knees, I'm gonna bring my feet together and I'm going to stand on my feet, pull my elbows together, tense my glutes, draw my stomach in and create a posterior pelvic tilt by using my glutes and my abs. So those are three examples of exercises that you can do to strengthen your abs, uh, strengthen your glutes, and strengthen your hamstrings, and also how to stretch your hip flexors and uh, stretch the lumbar spine. Now we've got an amazing program for training to uh, fix an anterior pelvic tilt. There's a link in the description of this video. It's got three phases, so it shows you progressive overload and periodization um, for the exercises so that you really see a change in what it is that you're doing. Um, but that is a really good guideline of what it is that you need to do in order to fix anterior pelvic tilt. Now, the last thing that I wanna say is I really wanna emphasize this. For all of those exercises that you do, it is very, very important that you train in posterior pelvic tilt, which means that you're pulling the top of your hips back, the exact opposite to anterior pelvic tilt. You can't do those exercises with an anterior pelvic tilt. You have to do those exercises with a posterior pelvic tilt. It's very, very important. Let me know how you go. Leave a comment in the description. And uh, of course, jump over to the Facebook group, the UMS Movement Mastermind, where you can post videos of yourself doing these exercises and ask for critique. And if you're ready to level up, and get a really effective program that I've used to fix my anterior pelvic tilt, then grab the program with the link in the description of this video. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you liked it, consider subscribing to our channel and make sure you click the notification bell so you know when our weekly videos are uploaded. Now, the best thing for you to do if you wanna stay connected with us and get free online coaching is to join our private Facebook group. It's called the UMS Movement Mastermind and we go live daily Daily, where we answer our members' questions. It's very interactive because you can post questions while we're live and we interact with you on the show. You can also upload videos or pictures of yourself with any movements, any stretches, strength training movements, calisthenics, weightlifting, anything that you're struggling with, and we'll critique you, give you feedback, let you know how you can get better. It's a really valuable resource. It allows a lot of communication with us and also our senior tribe members. You'll get answers very, very quickly, and it's absolutely free. So so jump on Facebook, search for UMS Movement Mastermind and join now. Until next time, have a great day.